you know. The names of the U.S. residents who then became the presidents and got a view from the White House Lou of Pennsylvania Avenue. George Washington was the first you see. He once chopped down a cherry tree. President number two would be John Adams and then number three. Tom Jefferson stayed up to write a declaration late at night. So he and his wife had a great big fight and she made him sleep on the couch all night. James Madison never had a son, any folk who wore a 1812. James Monroe's colossal nose was bigger than Pinocchio. John Quincy Adams was number six, and it's Andrew Jackson's butt he kicks. So Jackson learns to play politics next time he's the one that the country picks. Martin Van Buren, number eight, for a one-term shot as chief of state. William Harrison, how do you praise that guy was dead in 30 days? John Tyler, he liked country folk. And after him came President Polk. Zachary Taylor liked to smoke his breath, killed friends whenever he spoke. 1850, really nifty Miller, Bill Moe's in. Young and fierce was Franklin Pierce, the man without a chin. Follows next a period spanning, four long years with James Buchanan. Then the South starts shooting cannon, and we got a civil war. A war, a war down south of Dixie. Up to bat comes old Abe Lincoln. There's a guy who's really thinking. Kept the United States from shrinking. Saved the ship of state from sinking. Andrew Johnson's next. He had some slight effects. Congress each would impeach. And so the country now elects. Ulysses Simpson Grant, who would scream and rave and rant. While drinking whiskey, oh, the risky, cause he's tailored on his pants. It's 1877 and the Democrats would gloat, but they're all amazed when Rutherford Hayes wins by just one vote. James Garfield someone really hated cause he was assassinated. Chester Arthur gets instated, four years later he was traded. Lord Grover Cleveland really fat, elected twice as a Democrat. Then Benjamin Harrison after that, it's William McKinley up the back. Teddy Roosevelt charged up San Juan Hill, and President Taft he got the bill. In 1913 Woodrow Wilson. Sun takes us into World War I. Warren Harding next in line. It's Calvin Coolidge, he does fine. And then in 1929, the market crashes and we fight. It's Herbert Hoover's big debut, he gets the blame and loses too. Franklin Roosevelt, president who helped us win in World War II. Harry Truman, weird little human, serves two terms and when he's done. It's Eisenhower who's got the power from 53 to 61. John Kennedy had Camelot, then Lyndon Johnson took his spot. Richard Nixon, he gets caught and Gerald Ford fell down a lot. Jimmy Carter liked camping trips. And Ronald Reagan's speech and scripts all came from famous movie clips. And President Bush said, read my lips. Now in Washington, D.C. There's Democrats and the GOP. But the ones in charge are plain to see. The Clintons, Bill and Hillary. The next president to lead the way, well, it just might be yourself one day. Then the press will distort everything you say. So jump in your plane and fly away. Good afternoon, class, and welcome to 8th grade American History. I'm your teacher, Trevor Council, and today's lesson is on the presidential line of secession. Presidential line of secession. The United States presidential line of secession defines who may become or act as president of the United States upon the incapacity, death, resignation, or removal from office by impeachment or subsequent conviction of a sitting president or a president-elect. Now let's take a look at our KWL charts. Who can tell me what they know about the presidential line of secession?
Good job. Now who can tell me what they want to know? Good job, good job class. Now let's see if we can answer some of these questions. Eligibility. No person eligible to be president unless that person is a natural born citizen, is at least 35 years old, and has been a resident within the United States of at least 14 years. Now here's a complete list of the presidential line of succession. Vice President, Speaker of the House, President Pro Tempore of the Senate, Secretary of State, Secretary of Treasury, Secretary of Defense, Attorney General, Secretary of the Interior, Secretary of Agriculture, Secretary of Commerce, Secretary of Labor, Secretary of Health and Human Services, Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, Secretary of Transportation, Secretary of Energy, Secretary of Education, Secretary of Veterans Affairs, and lastly, Secretary of Homeland Security. The line of secession is stated in the Constitution three times. Article 2, Section 1. Section 3 of the 20th Amendment and the 25th Amendment. Now, Ms. Stubbs, could you read Article 2, Section 1 for me? Section 3 of the 20th Amendment. If the president-elect dies before his term begins, the vice president-elect becomes president on Inauguration Day and serves for the full term to which the president-elect was elected. On Inauguration Day, if the president-elect does not qualify for the presidency, the vice president-elect acts as the president until a president is chosen or the president-elect qualifies. Congress can provide by law for cases in which neither a president-elect nor a vice president-elect is eligible or available to serve. Now, Ms. Roebuck, could you read the 25th Amendment for me?
There were nine U.S. vice presidents who became president on the death or resignation of the president. Eight vice presidents succeed on the death of the president, and one vice president succeed on the resignation of the president. John Tyler was the first who succeeded William Harrison to become the 10th president of the United States. Then there was Millard Fillmore, who succeeded Zachary Taylor and went on to become the 13th president of the United States. Andrew Johnson became the 17th president of the United States after the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Chester Arthur succeeded James Garfield and became the 21st president of the United States. Theodore Roosevelt became the 26th president of the United States, succeeding William McKinley. Calvin Coolidge became the 30th president of the United States after the death of Warren G. Harden. Harry Truman became the 33rd president, succeeding Franklin D. Roosevelt. Lyndon B. Johnson became the 36th president of the United States after the fatal assassination of John F. Kennedy. And lastly, we have Gerald Ford, who became president after the resignation of Richard Nixon. Now here's a video. This is Walter Cronkite in our newsroom in... There has been an attempt, as perhaps you know now, on the life of President Kennedy. He was wounded in an automobile driving from Dallas Airport into downtown Dallas, along with Governor Connolly of Texas. They've been taken to Parkland Hospital there, where their condition is as yet unknown. We have just learned, however, ever that Father Huber, one of the two priests called into the room, has administered the last sacrament of the church to President Kennedy. We just have a report from our correspondent, Dan, rather in Dallas, that he has confirmed that President Kennedy is dead. There is still no official confirmation of this, however. It's a report from our correspondent, Dan, rather, in Dallas, Texas. Good evening. President Nixon reportedly will announce his resignation tonight, and Vice President Ford will become the nation's 38th president tomorrow. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Sources close to Vice President Ford say he promised his top aides today a smooth and orderly transition to the presidency and that preparations for that are well underway. Mr. Vice President, are you prepared to take the oath of office as President of the United States? I am, sir. If you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute. That I will... <laughs> Doesn't make much sense, Henry. He puts you here and then he runs around with a big tongue. President Reagan! This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. Good evening. The latest news, all things considered, is reasonably good. President Reagan, after successful surgery, is resting comfortably at George Washington Hospital here in the capital. But first we want to examine some of the serious issues raised by today's events. The president's security, the question of who runs the government when the president is incapacitated, and the issue of how the United States must act with regard to the rest of the world at a time of perceived crisis. And now it's pop quiz time. 
You have 10 minutes to take this.